start again. Yeah, so this, this talk is about the, the derivation of a new set of governing equations for single species multi component flow, sorry, single phase multi species flows, uh, including a full range of diffusive effects, so species diffusion and then viscosity and thermal conductivity as well. So it was initiated by David Young's and my supervisor, Ben Thornber, and then in the last year or so, I've also come on board and kind of still progressing this work a bit further. So, so I'll be talking about some problems that occur with um, multi-species finite volume solvers and then the derivation of an existing state of governing equations that eliminates these problems to include the effects of species diffusion. Uh, briefly mention the discretization of these new governing equations and then also give some preliminary uh, simulations and results and then also briefly talk about what we're going to be doing in the future. So our motivation is we want to study the Rickmeyer Meshkov instability uh, using high resolution simulations, so DNS, LES, uh, with shock capturing finite volume methods. Uh, and in particular, we want to be looking at the kind of intermediate time transitional dynamics. So it's our, our uh, kind of opinion that very early time dynamics, so the linear regime, can be very, fairly well described using various theoretical approaches, as can the, the later time dynamics using something like uh, self similarity. But then this intermediate time is reasonably hard to describe. And so we're initially going to be focusing on the uh, planar Rickmeyer Meshkov instability and also hope to transfer that in any insights into the converging cases as well. So a brief review of some, some fundamentals. So the governing equations for single, single phase compressible multi species flows, uh, the Navier Stokes equations uh, that are augmented by some additional transport equations. Uh, with the standard choice just being uh, species mass fractions. So the first equation there is just conserva conservation of species mass, and then you have conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. And the nice thing about these set of equations is they're fully conservative, so total mass, species mass, momentum, and total energy are all conserved. But there's some problems when you actually go to simulate these models and discretize them on a computer. So for finite volume methods, the, in the reconstruction phase, this approach actually leads to oscillations in uh, pressure and temperature across material interfaces and also contact surfaces in a single fluid. Um, it has been shown that for a first order scheme, uh, pressure equilibrium isn't maintained when the temperatures on either side of a contact surface aren't equal, as well as the ratio of specific heats not being equal. And also this is also further exacerbated when the interface is invected through the computational mesh. Um, so the, the problem essentially boils down to the fact that because finite volume methods deal with cell averages, the cell average value of, of the mixture gamma calculated from the uh, species masses is not actually the same value which is required to conserve pressure equilibrium. So, and uh, further, further problems result when you start using more advanced numerical methods. So more advanced reconstruction approaches, say uh, high order reconstruction in something like primitive variables or even characteristic variables. Uh, can actually shift the error, so that you can also see these errors, errors occurring in the temperature field as well. Uh, in theory, these will become ne negligible in the DNS limit, as the, so the interface between the two fluids is fully resolved, and then this cell average value approach is the same value that's required to conserve pressure equilibrium. However, the simulations will be a lot less computationally efficient, because you require a very large number of cells to actually approach this. So, uh, Alain et al, in this paper down here, showed that you can circumvent the problem by using a non-conservative approach, so the, uh, based on volume fractions. So the, this is still the same species mass uh, equation, but now written in terms of the partial density and the volume fraction of each species. And then these two, these two equations are also the same. And then we have an additional advection equation for the volume fraction of uh, one of the species. Uh, and the nice thing about this model is that it gets rid of all those problems that I was just talking about. However, uh, and it's also only non-conservative for this equation. All these equations are still conservative equations. But the, unfortunately, it's only really, it's only, it was only originally derived for uh, inviscid flows. So there's no inclusion of the effects of viscosity or thermal conductivity or species diffusion. And so in this work, we're actually going to take that same model and include those effects and retaining all the favorable properties of the model, so the fact that it preserves pressure equilibrium. Uh, the individual species temperatures are also retained in the mixture, which is, is quite nice, and it's also valid for general equations of state. 
So briefly go through the derivation. Um, this is going to go against what I just said, but the, if we assume that the species uh, in pressure and temperature equilibrium, but only at a single point on the face where the diffusive flux uh, acts, and then in the rest of the, of the computational cell uh, using isobaric closure, the pressures of, so for here it's just for two species, but yeah, the pressures are all equal, but the species temperatures are allowed to vary. Um, from this, we say that using Avogadro's hypothesis, because the species uh, at these two points have the same, are at the same pressure and temperature, they also have the same number density, which then allows these, us to state these next two assumptions, which is that the volume fractions may be equated with the number density fractions for each species, and also for each species, the number weighted, volume weighted, and mass weighted velocities are all, all equivalent, but that doesn't hold true for the, the uh, mixture velocities. And then we also assume the diffusion just to obey a uh, simple fixed law. So the, I won't go through the derivation in full here, but we, what we do is we start with the evolution equation for total number density of the mixture, and then applying the previous assumptions, we arrive at this equation here, which allows us to see that there are three processes that modify the volume fraction of each species. So advection with the number weighted mean velocity, which is this guy here, diffusive mixing, which is this second term, and then also this third term that arises from uh, pressure temperature, or well, the assumption of pressure temperature equilibration. So uh, a few more further manipulations gives us our new set of governing equations, and this is, this is for binary mixtures, but it can also be extended for more than two species. Um, so this, these first three equations are all just the same, same from the previous uh, mass fraction model, uh, where so these the right-hand side fluxes are the, are the same, um, just written the, the species mass equation in terms of volume fraction instead, and then we also have our little final volume fraction equation where this, these terms here basically come from converting from number-weighted to mass-weighted mean velocity. So now a few uh, <coughs> notes on how we discretize these equations in the, uh, the, our in-house CFD code, Flamenco. Um, the algorithm itself, the existing algorithm itself, we already have a discretization of the original Allaire volume fraction model uh, using uh, fifth order reconstruction for the inviscid fluxes plus a low mat correction and then second order central differences for the viscous flux and the temporal discretization is second order Runge-Kutta in a method of lines approach. And so we make the following modifications to accommodate the new model so the additional terms that modify the upwind direction of the volume fractions, so all of these terms here, uh, are again, they're also computed using second or central differences. The, uh, we modify the intermediate signal speed of the Riemann solver just for the volume fraction uh, to be this instead. And then we also need to make sure that the discretization is consistent with the assumptions that we made. So we actually modified the, these right-hand side terms here to be uh, consistent with, so if um, under the assumption of pressure and temperature equilibrium, then the mole fraction here will actually be equal to the volume fraction. So then this ensures that we've conserved, um, we've ensured consistency with the left-hand side terms because we basically need the diffusion coefficients here to be the same as the ones here as well, which are in, occur in the inviscid flux discretization. So to validate that what we do is actually um, seems to be correct, we used uh, first use three fundamental test cases in 1D. I'll only talk about two of them here because the, the third one is fairly sim simple. Um, so they're both just simple 1D diffusion test cases, but simulated with the, the full set of governing equations. The first case is just, you can see an animation of the first case there, which is just diffusion between two initially stationary gases, and then case two is the same case, but with an additional advection velocity to added to the interface. So the first test case comes from this paper here. It's just in a domain of zero to one, which has reflective boundary conditions. Uh, we have a 20 to one density ratio, and then values of ratio-specific heats of each species given there. And the nice thing about this is that we, we can actually, there actually exists a, an equal solution, assuming the solution is fully incompressible, 
and for fairly coarse grid resolutions, then this axe also is essentially the same solution of the fully compressible equations. Um, we also fix the diffusion coefficient and the, yeah, we can basically see that both for the mass fraction uh, equations and also for the new volume fraction equations, both initially converge at uh, close to exactly second order as we expected, which is a nice validation. Um, what's happening here is the fact that this is an incompressible solution, but we're solving compressible equations. Eventually, small compressibility effects uh, become resolved. So because this is a, a reflective, there's, we have reflective boundary conditions, basically a very small acoustic waves that are just bouncing back and forward across the domain that we eventually start resolving at high grid resolutions. Um, they can't quite see here, but for the mass fraction equations, if you go to even higher grid resolutions, the errors actually jump back up again once these compressi compressible effects are also resolved. The second test case is just the same as the first test case, but have this additional uh, velocity interface. We also double the domain and make the boundary conditions periodic. So the interface will advect and then to the right and then back again to where it started. Uh, so the analytical solution is the same as before. It's just mirrored about the, the middle of the domain. So we're actually advecting uh, two interfaces. And this, this test case actually gives us a really nice uh, example of why we set out to derive these new set of equations because basically for, uh, for cases where the interfa interface is advectivated, ad sorry, advected at a suitable velocity through the, uh, the mesh, the mass fraction uh, approach will actually generate fairly large errors. And so we can see that we're getting equivalent results for around four times uh, less number of points using the volume fraction model. Uh, which, given that the, the new set of equations are about one and a half times more computationally expensive to solve, this equates to roughly a 10 times saving in computational effort just in one day. So the next test case we're looking at is a 2D single mode rectifier mesh curve instability between air and SF6. Uh, the case setup is a Mach 1.5 shock, uh, pressure and temperature there, and that was the ratio of specific heats of both species. We make the assumption just for simplicity that the Prandtl and Schmidt numbers are both one. The initial uh, amplitude is a tenth of the wavelength, so we're roughly at the end of the linear regime. And then we also have initial uh, diff diffuse uh, interface so that we can fully resolve the interface. Uh, the Reynolds number based on the Rickmeyer velocity, the wavelength, and the average uh, viscosity is around 5,000. And we perform simulations in both a, a stationary and a moving frame of reference. So stationary would be with the laboratory frame of reference and then the moving frame of reference is in the post-shock uh, reference frame. So uh, uh, we're, com we're particularly interested in how the molecular mixing fraction, which is given there based on plane averages of uh, volume fractions, we're particularly interested in how that uh, converges. So we see for the, the volume fraction model and the results on the left here, the, uh, the convergence is nice and uniform. We actually get to these curves collapse by about 256 points across the initial wavelength. Uh, whereas for the, the so this is yeah, in the stationary reference frame. And whereas for the mass fraction model, we see that the convergence is, is not uniform at all, and actually it doesn't even converge by the, the largest number of grid points that we considered. And here's an animation. Uh, it's at a slightly, not, the, not at the highest number of grid points, but a slightly coarser number to really accentuate the differences between the two approaches. So you see uh, the approach on the left, the, the animation on the left here is for the new volume fraction equations. Whereas on the right is for the mass fraction model and just draw your attention to two things that really stand out. The, the shape of the spike, it seems to flatten out a lot more, which we deem to be an error to the true solution. And also the interfaces seem, seems to be a lot thinner when you compare there and there. It's basically due to the fact that pressure and temperature are actually an error across the interface. So, but in the results for a moving frame of reference, so the interface is now stationary with respect to the me with respect to the mesh, ignoring the actual evolution of the instability. Uh, the results are much more consistent, and the mass fraction results actually also converge quite nicely. And while it's not shown here, these two curves actually collapse to the exact the same single curve. 
Um, so th this this is nice, but it also so, so this I mean this seems to say that well the mass fraction equation seems to perform all right when if we can perform them in this uh, moving frame of reference so that's reasonably stationary with respect to the computational mesh. However, there are examples such as when you're trying to sim yep you're trying to simulate uh, reshock experiments, for example, that this wouldn't be possible. So the, our new set of equations would seem to be much more beneficial for, for those kind of situations. And here's just an animation here, basically just showing that the two approaches give ident identical results. And finally, uh, within the last week or two, I've just been looking at running a 3D multi-mode case. So this isn't actually to demonstrate the advantage of the new model over the old model, it's more to, to kind of suss out how the actual algorithm performs, what kind of, what's the kind of max and Reynolds number we're currently capable of simulating, as we also have some, uh, so, uh, some ILES results for this case already, so it's, it's nice to compare to those. So the, the performer DNS of the, this uh, standard problem from the, the FIDA group collaboration, which is recently uh, published on Archive, which was a, a large cross-code uh, comparison of planar rigmar meshkov instability. Uh, the, the case setup is given again here. It's now a Mach 1.8 shock, three to one density ratio. The gamma of both species are the same. Uh, and the, the Reynolds number, which is based on the initial integral width, velocity, the mean wavelength, and the average viscosity is uh, 455. So the initial perturbation is a narrow band perturbation with a, a constant power spectrum with the standard deviation is a tenth of the minimum <coughs> wavelength to ensure linearity of all, of all across all scales. Uh, and the simulations are performed in a moving frame of reference. So uh, looking at convergence of both the integral width, which is defined there, as well as the molecular mixing fraction again, we see that both the uh, original inviscid simulations and also our new viscous simulations all collapse to the same curve for the integral width. Uh, these are all non-dimensionalized. This is non-dimensional time and the integral width is non-dimensionalized by, this should be the average wavelength. Um, whereas for the molecular mixing fraction, the, we almost uh, achieve a fully converged solution at 512 cubed grid points. Um, and also we see that the viscous simulations uh, mix a lot quicker than the, the original inviscid simulations. Uh, so we can actually, because we're interested in kind of this range of non-dimensional time, we can actually use Richard, Richardson extrapolation to estimate, um, say, the point of minimum mix, so this point down here. And for the, the three finest grid resolutions, we can, there's a grid convergence index uh, for the between 128 and 256 here, and then between 256 and 512. And for these three grids, we can see that we're, we've pretty much reached the asymptotic, asymptotic range of convergence. And then using Richard, Richardson extrapolation, we extrapolate to find the point of uh, minimum mix and also the non-dimensional time that that occurs at. And so here's a nice animation of that case. See that it's clearly not fully turbulent, although you do, you do still see uh, some spikes that get actually advected away from the main mixing layer and also fluid that's initially entrained, say around here, actually mix it, mixes and diffuses quite quickly. So I'll let that play through once more. Yeah. Oh, just one, more, one more slide and then oh, just conclusion. Okay. Yeah, that's a quick, I'll be real quick. So just with derived new set of governing equations, uh, demonstrated advantages over traditional approaches um, have been assessing the efficiency of the new algorithm and basically in future work we plan to extend the coloring alg algorithm to much more uh, high orders of accuracy so that we can then kind of hope ideally reach uh, order of magnitude higher Reynolds number with using DNS. Yeah, thank you very much for your time and happy to take any questions. Uh, so, for, the, for those fundamental test cases, it was just fixed, but for, in general, we just computed off uh, mixture viscosity and turbulence limit number. Even in DNS? Yeah, yeah. So, are they the same? Consistent thing? 
uh, for, 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 for binary diffusion there will be, yeah. But for more than, for more than two species then, no, not, just, not necessarily. Yeah, so that it's, it's fifth order in one dimension, but due to the fact that it's only a one-dimensional reconstruction stencil in, in say, 3D, only, you only are formally second order accurate, and also we're only second order accurate in time and in the viscous fluxes anyway. So yeah. the, the, the plan is to, to use kind of more state-of-the-art finite volume approaches where you can discretize the, both the left and right side, hand side of the equations in one kind of unified, unified framework. And then the, so the higher order reconstruction uh, you can perform like a multi-dimensional reconstruction and also hopefully only have to perform a once a time step so it becomes a lot less expensive. Um, yeah. Have you considered discontinuous finite volume? Yeah, well, it's, it's based on, it's based on, oh. disc it's uh, ADA methods, yeah. so ADA, ADA DJ and ADA finite volume is what we're looking into, yeah. Yeah, it is for for the um, for that last simulation. Right by the time we got down to the the 512 gig resolution, yeah, we were hitting viscous time stepping, which we kind of figured was uh, appropriate given that if you're approaching the DNS limit, we kind of assumed that you would be actually hitting the viscous time step limit. We should be at least. Yeah. 